This is Waste Nights 2nd Edition. Waste Nights 2nd Edition is a game for two to four people. They will be playing cooperatively in a scenario-driven game uh, that is going to be complete with uh, a storyline and a narration uh, that is going to be propelled forward uh, by scenario books like this and a book of tales like this. The book of tales um, has like different events and things like that that it'll ask the players, do you want to do X or, or Y? And then depending upon their actions, it'll have direct effects to um, both their characters, what's going on the game board, and also what's, what's happening. And it'll also feed right into the scenario book here, uh, which will then say, okay, so you completed that scenario now, depending upon what you did and the choices you made here and the actions you did on the board, now we're going to go ahead to the next scenario and it's going to be set up in a certain way, depending upon the decisions and stuff that you did and the, how well you did and so on and so forth. But that's going to make a lot more sense here in just a little bit. I'm going to show you how the game is played. I'm going to show you this beautiful, beautiful board and all these cool little components, whatever. And then we're going to come back here and I'm going to talk more about, well, you know what, I, I, I'm going to talk more about this, but I'll explain why when I tell you about how uh, Waste Nights goes. All right, so here we go, how Waste Nights is played. All right, so here we go. This is Waste Nights. I'm going to show you how the game is played. And by that, I mean I'm going to show you some of the core mechanisms of the game, how you move around the board, uh, what happens when you have different encounters, how you have battles, and just like how you're going to explore the game while you are playing it. Now, I'm not going to dive too much into the storyline of the game until I get to my final thoughts. Um, the game itself... Uh, the one that I was given has uh, some very, very, like, gave me these two books. Like, one here is a scenario book that, that, you, that you're going to play through, and I, my understanding there will be plenty of these. And also then you have this book of tales, which is going to be chock full of, as I said, all these little paragraphs and interesting information that's going to tell you exactly what's going on when you go to certain spots on the board and you have certain interactions with what's going on. Uh, kind of a choose-your-own-adventure situation, if you will. I'm, like I said, I'm going to talk about that more in my final thoughts, mostly because I didn't want to like divulge too much about the storyline. I didn't want to tell you exactly uh, like how it goes. I want you, to, when you get this game, to like experience it yourself firsthand. Uh, you know, and and secondly, it's just because there's so many different ones and different ways that the game gets set up, and there's different paths. Uh, you know, it just it, it, it's one of those things where um, the mechanisms stay the same. It's just the story that's going to be altered and changed uh, depending upon. And you can go back and play it because you can obviously just choose. Like back when you play, when you read a choose your own adventure book, right? You you said, okay, I'm going to go in the cave. And then you went through the whole thing with the cave. And it's like, okay. That, and then you open up the book and you went back to that original page. And you said, okay, instead I'm going to climb down the cliff. You know, and so you made those two different choices or whatever. Anyway, moving forward. Um, what you see in here is this cool map of Australia that obviously is not like the current Australia, Australia as I know, uh, isn't cut in two. Um, there's lots of different spots in the map. I'm just going to like point out you, you're going to have these forest areas, you have these wastelands. These spots that have these like craters or chasms, those are impassable, so that's going to kind of uh, impede your movement as you're moving around the board. Uh, there are also these highways. Uh, highways are awesome because, because you are considered to be like this person who has uh, you know this this vehicle that you're going to be riding across the waste. Uh, you know you'll be using that, and highways actually allow you to travel for like zero movement points. So it's something that's you know uh, it, it's very fast to get on there, and you'll be plotting a lot of uh, travel that way. You might notice that there are all these there are um, these different. Uh, uh, locations as far as uh, cities and the cities themselves will have uh, different resources available to you like doctors or or uh, um, uh, repair shops things like that that you're going to be able to take advantage of um, there's also uh, different spots on the board that are going to have these little exclamation marks on or these little uh, and they might be a little tough to see i apologize or um, these biohazard marks and those depending upon uh, what you what the game you're playing and what you're doing will have different uh, uh, effects uh, depending upon the scenarios but for the most part like things like that if you go through them it's gonna be bad so uh, you're usually gonna end up uh, taking some damage or, or being waylaid a little bit if you will but you know just staying to the, like non non uh, like hazardous spots isn't gonna help you either and I'll explain how that works uh, when I show you the movement because you can definitely get into combats and get into uh, bad situations regardless of where you travel 
Um, there's also going to be like these locations that are going to have numbers on them. So you, you know, all these eight, nine, twelve, and whatever. And um, in some scenarios you play, those are going to be very important. There's going to be like you're going, it's going to say you need to go to spot 35 and deliver this item or pick up this item there and then bring it back to you know spot number nine and and so on and so forth. So uh, you will you will need to. Uh, not a, just because you go there and it's one game though it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to have anything to affect it and once again i'll talk more about the setups and how those scenarios work um in my final thoughts when you get to the end all right but um so i did choose two of of the the four uh waste nights uh that i was given i have played this four player and two player uh i enjoyed it in both uh manner i mean this is like a cooperative game you're going to be given um you're, you're like basically an adventuring party uh and you've been given a mission and you're gonna have to you know take you know and, and approach that and finish it as best as possible um each waste night will begin with a certain uh amount of uh, starting equipment um, which, you know, I've just, like, he's, uh, our guy, Johnny Taylor here, he's a trailblazer, uh, he's got a knife and a pistol, and he's got some trash armor that he's wearing, whereas Zoe Shaw, the mechanic, has a sawn-off son shotgun, a knife, and a, an armor vest that she, she happens to have on. Um, if you've played, uh, games like these, like the, the, the people on the map, uh, type of thing, you're gonna be very familiar, well, with what this is present what this is presenting to you. Um, you know, you're, you're going to have stats for each person that are going to possibly change and get better because this is a game where you can level up. I love games where you, you like, when you have achievements that the, as the game goes through, like, you get experience and then you get to actually level up your characters and, and they get better as time goes by. And I'll talk about leveling up here in just a little bit, probably after I talk about combat because that's obviously, well, combat encounters, but that's how you're mostly going to get your experience and you improve yourself. You are also are going to get a, 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 a vehicle of some sort. In this case, uh, Zoe has an off-road uh, vehicle, or, and Johnny Taylor has a motorbike. Uh, that is, you're not walking around uh, these wastelands. You are you are riding this vehicle. Uh, the vehicle itself will have a certain number of, amount of space. Uh, that it can carry things in, it'll have uh, a distance that it can drive, um, and plus it'll like it has like its own stats as far as how much damage it can take before it gets um, gets wrecked, and in which case then you have to get it fixed before you can start you know moving again and at, at, at your normal pace. So lots of cool things as far as that's concerned. Since these are kind of far away, I just want to like show you uh, one of the characters I'm not using. I'm going to show you Logan Harris, the Avenger, which I'm sure that isn't the last of the V1 Interceptors behind him or anything like that. Obviously, this is Australia, and you're going to see like there's going to be a lot of different characters that are going to uh, seem like they're going to be from other uh, genres that you have. And, and, and I don't take that as being like, I take it as an homage or, or just taking um, something that's already awesome and using it in an awesome game as well so you can say say whatever you like as far as one way or the other uh, but I mean it, like I said if you've played games like this you're gonna be very familiar with these things um, it's it, you're gonna have your stats here so like uh, if Logan gets into hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat with his blades he's gonna get a white die and a green die to roll and guns he's gonna get a white guy and green day uh, green uh, green day green die to roll but there's other things and you have certain events that are going to say you need to roll against your survival skill or your negotiate skill or whatever and you'll need to roll dice and try to get a certain number of successes um it's going to tell you like how well good he's at exploration um what he, what he can what it take what he can do with repairing when he's in camp um all kinds of things like that and also you know it's you know it's one of those things where he is going to have his own little special uh, ability or whatever you know and, and like which in this case it says your vehicle gains plus one speed you know so um you know it's just stuff like that over here you can see this is the uh, experience track and so you start here and you move down as you gain experience every time you get to a three six or nine you're going to get a chance to improve your character in some way um you improve your character by uh taking a boost let me just grab these cards over here you take these uh cards and what you'll do is uh like these cards themselves will have like different abilities and these have abilities on the fronts uh and, and the backs and so like uh this one these are happened to be for like zoe so if, if zoe gained a level uh like you could you could go through these and some of these are just going to be like okay like if you take this it's just going to improve your uh like the 
the die roll that you have for those particular skills. Uh, but like on the other side, it says um, it says specialized there. And on the text in the specialized says, when testing uh, negotiate or tech, um, each uh, each spades, which is like you can see that little multicolored spade there, each spades uh, result is considered to be two successes. So it's just one of those things that when you you're able to level up your character, and I think, like I said, anytime you can level up a character and, and see yourself grow as the game plays, and obviously this is a game that's trying to like replicate an RPG feel, and if you're going to be trying to replicate an RPG feel, you have to be able to level up your character. It just it just that that's that's a quintessential part of any RPG game. Um, I want to, since I'm talking about the characters and the vehicles, I want to talk about one other thing really, really quickly. This isn't a game where you can die. Well, okay, there's, I guess, really rare situations where your character can get completely eliminated, like, and, and out of the game. But you're gonna take damage, you're gonna take radiation damage, you're gonna take biohazard damage, things like that, um, when you're when you're out traveling about the ro the roads and the wastelands and, and having encounters. Uh, but if you're ever reduced to zero health, you are not done conscious. Basically, you lose a turn, and, and on your next turn, basically, you just recover from unconscious, and, and then you, you wait again until you can go again. So um, it, it's it's debilitating. I mean, I, nobody likes missing a turn of the game, but uh, you, you aren't um, out of the game. However, you do end up taking what's called an injury. And let me just grab these really quick. So uh, you have uh, this deck here that says like unconscious on the back. And what you do is you grab the last one on, on the other, oop, just grab, grab the last one. And you know, and it still says, you know, unconscious on the side. And then after you cure your unconscious, it just says something on the other side. Like this case, it says broken leg. And so broken leg, it says after performing the move action, you lose uh, one, um, uh, one one MP with with a minimum of three MP. So it's one of those things where uh, you're always going to be like taking a little bit of damage because you're moving around and you have a broken leg. Now you might be saying, well, that sucks. You know, it's like I don't have a broken leg. Well, you can get that fixed when you go to a doctor uh, that that happens to be you know in, in one of the in any of the cities that you travel to. Um, your car. Uh, or a vehicle, I should say. It doesn't. Know, there's a bike over there. Will also take damage, and then um, you, they will get. Then things will get wrecked. In which case, they'll you'll you'll have to put this on your car. But they also can take um, damage. That'll have like certain things. Certain things like here's a broken injection malfunction. And when you have a broken injection malfunction, um, it says when performing the move action or the explore action, you can't spend fuel tokens, which are these little guys here, uh, to, um, you can't spend those to like help out your action, which is something, and I'll, I'll explain those when I talk about the move and the explore action, you'll explain that more, better. But basically it's a debilitating thing. Once again, it sucks if it happens, but if you go to a city, you can get that repaired. So it, it isn't like gonna be for the rest of the game. All right, so enough of me prattling. Uh, how does the game actually play? So after you get your scenario, like, you know, hey, you need to do X, Y, and Z, and then you can move on to the next one. And I should say right now, like, a lot of these things will be like, oh, you need to do this in five turns. But if you don't do it in five turns, it isn't like a lot of cooperative games where you're just like, oh, uh, you lose. <laughs> no, if you don't succeed at it, there will be like a, a, it'll tell you, go to page so-and-so in the Book of Tales and read what it says, and then it'll actually take you to the next part of the story, the next part of the scenario, and it'll say, all right, so you failed at what you did, but you get to continue with the story, but you're gonna start in a slightly different way than if you had uh, had succeeded. And I think that's something that's really cool. It, it, it means that you can come back to the game later and you can play it a different way, and you can, you know, follow like the game in in and have a different play experience even if you've already gone through the same scenario again something i'll talk about again here in just a little bit but i just think that's a really really cool aspect uh, of the game all right so um during your turn you get to take two actions but you can't repeat either of the actions so um you'll 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 choose one and then you'll take that action and then you'll choose another action um, just briefly naming all the actions, you have a move action, you have a camp action, you have an explore action, you have a city action, and then you have a plot action. Plot actions will be different depending upon the scenario. So, it, you know, and I'm not going to go into that right now, but just 
know that when you open up a scenario and it says, okay, this is the next part of this chapter of the story you're doing, and it'll say, these are the plot actions you'll be doing, and then, then those will be on there. And then finally, you have pass. Ooh, pass. Okay, so um, pass, I'm not going to explain what that is. Basically, that means, okay, I'm done. Usually, you'll do that if, like, you're moving to a spot uh, and you, you get to the spot you want to be, but you're not prepared to do exactly what you want to do just yet. Uh, or, you know, or, or maybe you had to take a camp action and now you don't have enough movement points to get to the spot you want to get to. So you just pass instead of take gambling of, of moving and taking damage or having another encounter or whatever, but it'll happen. But okay. Move actions are pretty standard. You're just going to take your character and you're going to figure out where you're going to move to. Everybody's going to have a certain movement point allowance that you're going to have. And it's going to be dependent upon uh, the vehicle that you have. Uh, you know, and so in which case, like, the, the motorcycle over there has a five movement and the off-road vehicle has a four movement. Um, depending upon the terrain, and you probably can't see it really well up there, but um, it costs zero movement points to move on the highways, like I said earlier. It takes one movement point to move through the deserts or the wastelands. It takes two movement points uh, to get through these forests. And if you want to go over these mountains, it takes two movement points as well. Now, as I said, um, there are like these little uh, spots uh, where you have threats, uh, radiation, and uh, biohazards. And so you might want to try to avoid those, if at all possible, as you're moving. Uh, if you move over a threat, you, you have to draw a threat token uh, uh, from this bag, and then it will be resolved at the end of your movement. And I'll talk about those threat, uh, threat tokens here in just a brief moment, but just uh, rarely is that going to help you. Uh, then if you uh, get a radiation, you, you suffer a radiation damage, which you will place on your, your person like so. Um, radiation can be cured of yourself. Um, it takes a while to do so, uh, but it can be done. And then you will have uh, like your possible biohazard damage. And then, you know, and biohazard damage, um, so there's these damage tokens, I'm just going to show you here. You have damage tokens that are going to be red on one side, and they're going to be green on the other. Green is biohazard damage. Uh, biohazard damage can still be healed, uh, like a, like a, like normal, uh, like normal damage, and I'll talk about healing damage also here in a little bit. But biohazard damage, you actually have to flip it from the green to the red side, and then remove the the, the red token from your player board, from your player board. So it takes double the amount of time. Uh, to heal those, and that's like what a biohazard damage is. You know, try to avoid biohazard damage. It's a good idea. All right, so uh, just so let's just say like so. Here we have our intrepid adventurer Zoe Shaw, and you know she is she is moving, and she like maybe she was trying to get to the city for whatever reason, and and she's like, well, I don't really want to go through this this biohazard. I want to go through there. And so she would go one, two, and then three, four, and end up in that spot. Because she's got four moving points, she's going to get to the city next turn. Now, she didn't get a threat token, because um, she didn't go over any of the threat spaces. And she, um, so, but she now, since she is done moving, she is going to have to draw a card from, from uh, the, the corresponding deck of the, the, uh, the train that she's on. Now, because Zoe is in the mountain, uh, we're going to have to go ahead and use uh, the cards that have uh, the the mountain and the forest uh, back on them, like you see here. Now, I've just I grabbed three cards that uh, of, of one of each type that you're going to find uh, in that particular in, in both of the in, like encounter decks. Um, so uh, here we have um, just like this is called an encounter card. Uh, that says like encounter E. Now what that is basically is that if uh, the particular scenario you're on has an encounter E, uh, the scenario page will tell you what to do uh, with that particular information and you'll go ahead and handle that. Now the second one I'm going to have is called like an event card and this one is like this thing of a landslide here. So with the landslide, um, it just says uh, your test survival. Uh, if you pass, you may perform one free action this turn, even the one even uh, one that you've already performed this turn, or fail. Your vehicle suffers two damage uh, for each missing success. And so um, you know, uh, and it also says if you discard, 
uh, one fuel, you can just skip it. So in this case, let's say Zoe wants to go for it. Uh, we're going to test her survival. Uh, her survival is two white dice. Now it says we need two successes to succeed. Now I might as well just show you these dice. Um, the dice themselves have pips for like successes on them. You see there's two successes there. Uh, you know, some of them are going to have that those spades that I said earlier. Let me show you. Um, they have these on the on the sides. Sometimes, like in some, in some cases, like you'll, you'll have an effect that says if this pops up, uh, have a certain you know, like you're gonna go ahead and, and apply a certain effect if that happens. Um, if if it doesn't isn't like that, and they, these are like usually in combat. If it isn't, if that you know, otherwise it's just a fail. And some of them are going to have like this little break icon there as well. And again, um, mostly that's combat. And you know, in a, like a skill test like this, it, it doesn't come up. So rolling the two dice, we see what would happen. And I get one success. So unfortunately, I'd be in a situation where uh, Zoe's, Zoe's car would take two points of damage. And you'd have to go ahead and take uh, those and put those on there like so. Uh, you know, pretty straightforward stuff, but I mean, once again, it is like part of the narrative of the game. Now, a lot of times what you'll have are just encounters with things you, you have to fight. So here we have the druids. Um, the druids, if you can, they, they'll have a certain amount of health. In this case, they have four health. Um, it'll tell me what they're going to roll. They're going to roll two green dice and a, uh, a blue die. And then it says this, um, if, and then if you notice, right, you probably can't see it. It's a little, little tiny text there, but it says if you roll that spade, um, this, you know, this enemy deals two damage from that. Uh, and it gains bonuses depending upon the space of terrain. If you're in the mountains, it gains range and it gains a health. And if it is, if it's in the scrub, you know, like that forest area, it would be hand to hand and armor piercing. So, uh, you know, this is one of those things where it's kind of neat, depending upon where you run into them, that's what's going to happen. So in a combat, since I, 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 I'm showing you those, I might as well go over combat and describe to you exactly how this works. So combat is a pretty straightforward affair. It is a dice-based affair. Uh, you will roll dice depending upon your ability and the equipment that you're going to use. In this case, Zoe Shaw is using her sawn-off shotgun. Um, she's not because because both are range. She's going to you know otherwise they, uh, they're going to get to shoot her before she gets close. So she's going to use range, and they're going to use range. Um, she's going to get uh, her her gun skill, which is a white die and a green die, and then the gun that she's using, which is going to be these two green dice. So, and, and combat is considered uh, to be uh, simultaneous. So there isn't a, any situation where uh, you're going to have uh, like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I guess if melee people are charging forward, that kind of thing, then uh, yes, you, you, you sometimes you'll get a, an attack before they get to do anything. But usually combat is gonna happen um, at the same time and you're gonna deal damage to each other at the same time. All right, so let me just grab, and um, in this case, like uh, the other player will roll uh, for the other player and then you'll just see what happens. So let's see what Zoe gets, just out of curiosity here. See if she gets enough hits to, to kill kill them. Ugh, <laughs> that was a horrible roll. You get like one success. So you're gonna do one damage and then I'm gonna guess, let me grab this blue die, the blue die is pretty good. Let me just see what happens if we roll these blue dice, this blue dice with the uh, the two green for, oh, only two successes, that's not that bad. So now you have a situation where, let me just show this, so you have the armor uh, that she has, which has that two on there, meaning you can protect her from two damage, um, and then you may break this card to prevent up to two damage. So if she did that, she'd have to flip the card over, eventually possibly getting repaired, she did a camp action, which I'm going to tell you about here in just a little bit, and then if you, uh, if you use the camp action, you'd be able to flip it back over, but the vest would still protect one more time at one before you'd have to break it and throw it away. Uh, but let's say she had just defeated the, the druids. You would see here on the bottom, uh, that she would gain uh, one one ammo, and I should have mentioned that as well. If you're going to be using your weapon, you need to spend ammo. These are those ammo tokens. Um, you, if she would gain an ammo from from uh, defeating them, and also the little chevron there means that she would gain an experience uh, from defeating them as well. Now, before I get too far away, sometimes what will happen is that you will get uh, a free bit of gear. Uh, from them as well, and I just wanted to show this. This I actually this is kind of cool. So the game is going to come with something like this. I have no idea if it's going to be like this, but these are the gear uh, uh, items here, and you have them in here because what you do is you draw from the back of the deck 
to reveal the gear. So if you'd gotten a gear, like it would say, oh, all right, so here you go, now you got a crossbow. And so like in the crossbow you see it adds a, it, it's ranged, it adds a blue die, and it would have, um, you know, requires no ammo to attack, and if you, uh, if, if, if you roll the, uh, the, the spades action, it does one damage. Um, so, you know, it's kind of cool, and I like how this works, um, and you'll be drawing those. And, like, when you're in the cities, which I'll talk about here in just a little bit, when you're in the cities, you'll be able to kind of, like, uh, go haggle, and you'll draw three of these out of here, and uh, you'll be able to, like, trade your items that you have to try to get, um, like, better and equip yourself and, and improve yourself. But uh, I kind of like the fact that combat is very, very straightforward like this, and it isn't really, really like, okay, check this little uh, little bonus here, check that little bonus there. All right, are, are you, how far away am I from you? Can I do this? Can I do that? It's, you know, I, I, I don't like it when you're playing a game like this and one person's having their adventure and everybody else is waiting for their turn to have their adventure, and all of a sudden now we, we break down into like a five-minute, six-minute, seven-minute combat uh, with one person doing their thing and it's just like oh I just want to take my turn come on do your thing but you know so yes combat may maybe a little um, little more simple than other games of this type but I think it's 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 a good thing because it, it keeps the game moving and I think that's uh, when you're playing a, a narrative game like this uh, keeping the, the flow of the game always moving forward as we say whenever we play games like this uh, it, it helps out a lot all right so uh, that's the move action and plus, you know, del delving into a few of the other, like, you know, things like combat and what have you. Uh, so camp action. So when you take a camp action, you're just going to basically hunker down in the spot that you're at. Oh, I apologize. I was going to talk to you about these threat tokens. So, um, the main thing about threat tokens is you're going to reach in here and you're going to grab these and you're going to have like certain icons that are on them. Like here's like this, this vehicle damage icon. And depending upon the account, what you get, uh, sometimes you'll have situations where uh, you're just going to take uh, that damage that's on there. You just take that, that, that thing. Sometimes you'll uh, have things like this, like you'll have a die on there. And if you, have, if you fight a combat with somebody, uh, that person, that combat, they'll get an extra white die for it. Um, threat tokens are going to be pulled randomly out of this bag, and it's just going to affect whatever encounter that you have in some way. And... Um, you know, not usually, if ever, in a in a in a good uh, way at all. So, uh, just um, it's it's it, I I like it because sometimes, and I think they've been, they've been placed the threat spots on the board have been placed very very strategically because they're right in the places that you usually want to go through, but. Unfortunately, you know, it, it's like a risk reward type thing. You gotta like, you know, is it worth it for me to get there quicker? Uh, or do I wanna take the long way around and avoid that thing? And sometimes you'll draw a token out of there that just doesn't really match up really well with like the thing. So I mean, oh, it's like, oh, I, I got a landslide encounter. Uh, it doesn't have, I don't have an enemy to deal with. So it doesn't really affect you that much. So it, it can work in your favor just by gambling a little bit too. But anyway, so anyway, camp actions. Um, Camp actions, uh, you can do a lot of different things, but mostly what you're going to be doing is you're just going to be either uh, like healing yourself or you're going to, and you can do all these things. You can heal yourself, you can repair your, your uh, you can repair your vehicle, uh, and uh, you can also like sometimes you'll have different cards or effects uh, that are affecting you depending upon like the, the what you're going through as far as the scenario goes or the items that you have that are also camp oriented as well. Um, Healing yourself is pretty easy. You just, you have, uh, you, you can use any number of your, like, little medicine bottles that you have uh, to heal heal your heal yourself. As a member, you can, um, you can use uh, every, one, uh, every one of those that's spent, you can heal three normal damage. Uh, or uh, you can use one to completely heal one, uh, uh, like, radiation token. So, like, if, she, if, if Zoe Shaw did a camp action... She could go ahead and spend one of these and just heal the radiation damage that she had taken from that for, that she had received. If she had uh, like 
And then if she had like, uh, and she wanted to also, because there's no limit how many you can use, if she wanted to spend this to heal these two damage that she had, she can do that, but she doesn't get to hold over. Remember, she can heal up to three. Now, the interesting thing is, remember, if she had a green damage, like I said, remember you have like uh, the stuff that's hard, the biohazard damage, she could use this for three healing. She could use one to flip it over, one to get rid of it, and one to get rid of that damage, like so. And so, um, and that's the healing. In addition to healing, you can also do your a, a repair, and you can use that to repair your gear uh, by flipping. If it was in red, you can flip red over into the green side. You can also use your repair actions to remove damage that your car may have taken. Uh, each character is going to have a different repair uh, ability. Like Johnny Taylor only has a one, uh, but Zoe Shaw the mechanic has a four. So you can just use each one of those. Remember, you can both heal and repair. You don't have to pick one of on one of eat one of the two you can do both of them um you know i also when you camp you can upgrade your character but it should be known that you can upgrade your character at any time it doesn't have to be through a camp action to do that all right so uh also if two if two knights happen to be in the same spot and they're camping at the same spot then they can share uh, like items with each other. Uh, they can uh, they can repair each other's items for each other. Uh, they can heal each other, things like that. So um, you know, if you do meet up, you are able to interact, which is also a, a good strategy in, in, in any cooperative game. All right. So uh, one of the other actions you can do is uh, exploration. So when you when you explore things, uh, basically what you're going to be doing is you're looking to try to collect. Uh, resources uh, of some type. Um, when you do an explore action, uh, you're going to draw the top card uh, from the explore deck. Let me just go ahead and grab all these. Um, so the explore deck has this cool little map on the side of it like so. Uh, the explore cards are going to, and then you're going to turn this card and you're going to turn it face up in front of you. Now depending upon the spot that you are at, it's going to tell you what you can get. So in this case, let me just actually, let's say Johnny, let's, let's give Johnny a chance. He hasn't been able to do anything. So let's say Johnny's on this highway spot over here. And so, and Johnny uh, is, is, is in desperate need uh, of some fuel. And so I turn this card over and I see that, it, you know, the, the, the spot here has one, like, like, uh, like it has, looks like a, there's a damage token there, but there's also a, a medicine uh, spot there, if you can see that right there. But just like uh, uh, repair actions, everybody's got a different exploration ability. And Johnny's got a three. Well, he doesn't want his car or his bike to take damage. So we're going to draw another uh, exploration token. And we're going to turn it over and we're going to put it on there. Now we have a situation. And, and once you put an exploration card on top of another one, you have you, that one's gone. You can never go back to it. Uh, so in this one, it has two fuel on it like so, and it has still that damage token. But that two fuel might be what Johnny wants, right? And so he's like saying, oh, geez, I don't know. I, 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 do I want to keep going? But then he's, you know, but he's going to say, well, you know, let's, let's, let's give it one more shot, even though like he's, he's, you know, like throwing caution to the wind and we're just going to see, you know, what happens. Maybe he can get super lucky and not get anything bad. So we're going to draw, you know, we're going to draw one more card. Uh, off the top of the deck and see what we get oh so we got an ammo and a fuel which is still good but look at that he's gonna get uh some radiation damage for his trouble and since he's used all three of his explorations he has to accept that last possible result so in this case what he would do is he would take those two uh uh he would take those 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 uh I those items out of the supply the ammo and the fuel and then he would also uh, have to uh, take one of these radiation tokens and place that on himself to show that he'd, he'd gotten a little dose uh, of, of some of some bad juju there. So, you know, exploration is pretty straightforward again, uh, but and there are some really good rewards. Sometimes you can just get experience uh, for for doing the doing explore actions. So, um, but it is like sometimes just like it's it's definitely like almost like. You know, I, 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 I don't really know what to do this round, or I maybe I just need, like, uh, some ammo or some healing or something like that, and that's what you're going to have to do for it. And um, it's, uh, it's and sometimes you can even have uh, different, uh, like, it's needed 
to like have different kinds of encounters as well. And I'm just going to kind of leave that a little bit vague, but just so you know, as you explore this game and get further and further into it, you're going to see uh, why the explore action, explore action is even more uh, uh, useful as it is. Now, the final thing is if you are on a city, you know, and Zoe gets to the city finally, um, there's lots of different things you can do in the city. Um, when you're there, uh, you can go to a, the quack, which is basically the doctor. Uh, you can, they will heal radiation up to four uh, damage according to the normal healing rules. So basically it improves the ability of the medicine that you have. Uh, they can also get rid of those injury cards if you happen to get any. At the garage, uh, the knight will, re uh, you can repair your up to three damage from your vehicle according to normal repair rules. Un alternatively, if you have any like malfunctions, like your dam your car took enough damage to have a malfunction, you can have those removed as well. Um, at, at, there's a workshop, you can flip one broken gear card uh, to its working side, and the repair cost for it uh, is, is ignored. Uh, normally there is a repair cost to fix your gear, um, and that's located on each item of gear. It'll be in the bottom left corner, like you can see here in the knife, the cost, the cost is one. Um, but you can ignore that when you're at a workshop, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then, that other thing is, as I said, you could barter, you, go, you basically travel around the town trying to, trying to barter. Uh, you're going to receive, uh, you draw three cards from the bottom of the gear deck and you place those uh, with their broken sides face up and this is the offer. And then you can try to trade uh, your items that you have uh, in exchange for those, those, those things that are available. Now, uh, only you are able to get th these offers and you'd have to like try to figure out a way to like, you know, exchange items of your own to get these items so like if you have these three cards i'm just going to like show you like so they, here we like had remember i had that crossbow but we have a crossbow a spear and a geiger counter are the things that are available and so at the bottom like you can see the crossbow is the really nice item it, it has a three on the broken side meaning you're gonna have to offer them at least three in value to get that um this spear is a two so you'd have to offer at least two. And then finally, the Geiger counter is also two. And depending upon what you are trying to accomplish, you can then mix and match and exchange um, both the equipment that you have, but also you can exchange like other gear that you have. You can exchange like your, your medicine and your fuel and what have you uh, to try to get and better yourself. Um, you know, this is actually a pretty good way to get better gear as you play the game. Um, sometimes you just aren't getting lucky. You're not finding the right things when you're exploring you're not you're not finding uh like the right enemies to kill that are going to give you those gear as well so uh you know heading to a city to upgrade is is a very very good method to follow and it, it works really really well and there you have it i mean that is uh the core mechanisms of waste nights like i said i wasn't going to go really fully into the whole storyline thing because i'm going to do that here in just a few minutes for you uh but um it, this is one of those games where if you're teaching to somebody, you're going to have to take 10, 15 minutes to kind of maybe walk them through their very first turn. Uh, but once they get through that, uh, it's going to be like second nature. Plus, uh, and I, I, I gush about stuff like this all the time. Uh, whenever you, people give you good player aids, like here we have how to do combat. Here's what different combat traits mean, what you can do on your turn and what it costs to do every one of your turns. Stuff like that have a reference that all the all the really good like overview of what you're going to do it really helps out a lot and and but like i said once the once the storyline grabs you once you're playing the game once you're clicking along uh this game runs smooth as silk and there's very little downtime and everybody's gonna be having a blast trying to figure out where your story is going to end up but let me talk about that and more uh in my final thoughts with uh talk about the uh, the, the different scenarios and also the 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 tail book uh, right now Jeez. All right, so there you go. That was waste night second edition Hope you got a good idea of how the game is played as I said it is a pretty straightforward uh, Like scenario driven storyline driven narrative driven type game uh, That is going to appeal to I think a lot of different people uh, You know it has some resource management going on it has some like plotting of movement It is firmly two feet stepped into uh, the thematic uh, game, of course. You know, it, it's going to have that going on. But I think there might be a little bit enough Euroe to it. Well, maybe not. Who knows? 
trust me, I understand the people that are going to like this type of game are going to be the people that are going to like this type of game. This is the type of game that I got into the hobby to play, and it was an absolute joy uh, to, to run through this one scenario that I was given. All right, so I, I talked about these two books so much, and now I'm going to finally touch on them before I tell you exactly why this game is awesome. If you hadn't told that, I already thought the game was awesome. So here we have this, this guide here, and this guide has several... Uh, different pages. I don't want to talk about all of them too much. They, they'll tell you a little story. And, and I should say the rules itself tells a good background story as far as why the world is where it is and, and why it is all destroyed and whatever. And all these different, like this one major big uh, corporation called Cerberus and how it like, uh, you know, like it was this, this monolithic type thing and it crumbled and whatever. And I'm getting beyond myself. But it has all these different pages and chapters of whatever. Ooh, I just showed you something there. Ooh, sorry about that. But I, I, I don't want you to like, um, uh, like, I, I didn't want to go through this whole thing, right? I, I wanted you to be able to experience it as you played. So, um, like, when you open it up, it'll, like, have, like, Scenario 1, The Awakening. And, and this is just... Uh, and it tells you right there, it's like how long it's going to take, how many players, um, you know, and so on and so forth. And just quickly it says, uh, you're sitting in a bar in Pumps, the biggest city of the northern coast. All kinds of people look for petrol here, bikers traveling through the cracked Australian highways, as well as the foolhardy wanderers ready to cross the Great Divide, looking for a new start in the west. You're drinking cold water, not lukewarm rainwater, typical uh, for Badlands, but filtrated pure water. You hope that someone will hire you as your resources are almost depleted. One look around the joint, and you notice a group of men sitting in the corner. They're discussing about something vigorously, and you can see the symbol of the Old World Order, a scientific organization comprised of people who firmly believe that they can bring civilization and order to this ruined world again. It seems they look at you from time to time as if they want something. They're, they might be looking for mercenaries. You slowly stand up and start walking towards them when suddenly a tall, scar-faced man wearing a duster enters the bar. Considering his looks and the way he limps, he must have been to hell and back, but still he gives you a piercing look. He is especially curious about your weapons. Do you talk to the scientists? C1. You talk to the newcomer? C217. So what that does, it feeds into this. And depending upon your choice, you will go and read the, 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 the paragraph 1 or 217, deciding what you want to do. So let's just go to 217. I'm, like, I'm not going to go through everything, but I'm just going to go through these couple of things here. So 217. Uh, There's no time for talking, says the man sitting heavily. I'm Anton, one of the judges. You've probably heard about us. I was hired with my companions by citizens of Queens Valley to find certain cybernetic creation they call Jammer. However, there were too many active machines in the area. I'm the only one alive for my team. Cans murder the others. Cans are robots, obviously. Uh, I must look for reinforcements, but someone should keep tabs on the robot. They say it's equipped with a unique module enabling it to control other machines. If we laid our hands on it, the waste would surely become a safer place. I have no idea where the jammer is now, but we managed to locate a few areas of his activity. I also have some bullets to spare, for starters. You'll get more once the jammer is down and we meet again. So, now actually it says set up. So, before you even knew what was going on, now you haven't even set up the board, it's going to tell you. It says search both, remember I mentioned this, search both of the wasteland decks, those are those like, like the, those decks when you're going to be drawing for threats and possibly, for all, and it says gear enemy cards. So basically you're looking for the robots. Then shuffle these cards and create a separate deck. This is the machine deck. Important. If the machine deck is already in this game, skip this step. Then choose. You take Anton's ammo and, le and, and leave pumps, see paragraph 10, or this is odd business. You refuse to help Anton and go see the scientists. So maybe you don't like Anton, maybe you don't trust him. So then you're gonna go to the scientists instead. So now we're gonna go ahead, and I'm just gonna read you that one quick. I do apologize, we're kind of jumping around here. Uh, but you can see where this goes. And so it, it doesn't, and I like that it doesn't railroad. Oh, you went to see Anton? Oh, the scientists explode. Yeah, <laughs> no, you can go talk to scientists. So it's like, uh, the man doesn't take no for an answer. He blocks your way. In wrong hands, the module installed the gem will lead to a catastrophe. Take this, take this too, just help me. He reaches to holster for a gun and points at a, picked up, uh, a pickup parked in front of the bar. It's full of canisters. You take this stuff, Leave pumps behind and go looking for the jammer. See number 50. 
If you have already refused the scientist's proposition, you must choose this option. You know, it's like, you know, what more could possibly harm you than this? The, so, like, that's, like, it says that you must have refused the, 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 the scientist, and this is your action. So, basically, what it is, is you're, you get, because you chose another one, you're going to get fuel, and you're going to get um, uh, the ammo as well, as far as the, the stuff. And now you're going to begin uh, your adventure. So, like, oh, you know, it's like, but, I mean, I personally, like, the first time we went to the scientists, and, and we stuck with them. And so, like, the scientists are kind of send you on the same thing, but a slightly different mission, you know, just a slightly different purpose uh, behind it. So then it says, go to, you, it says turn to 50, and then now you're going to like, and it eventually, mm, here we go, so at 50, uh, it says, uh, place four challenge tokens, and these are just the yellow tokens that are at the board, uh, with the exclamation on the following spaces, 3, 12, 18, and 19. These are the jammers activity spots that you may investigate. Distribute two ammo and two fuel among yourselves. Search the gear deck for the Ingram card. So you're going to get a you're going to get a machine pistol as well, and then go to the plot sheet on Jammer's Trail. And so now it has told you now open this plot and then go ahead and get moving on and, and move forward in a different direction, and you're going to be doing something else. So. And, and that's like completely different from like if you had taken the scientists up on their offer. It's a different thing. So that's the really cool thing about this game. It's like it, depending upon the choices you make, it isn't just one of those things where it's like, oh, you picked you picked B. Okay, well we're going to kind of tell you a different story, but it's going to be you're going to get to C. And it, oh, you picked A. Oh, we're going to tell you a different story, but you're going to go to C. It is radically different uh, between the two different things, and and exploring that is going to be half the fun, and it's going to add a lot to the replayability. So. Now then, because I, I don't want to read any more, I don't want to give away any more, you're just going to have to experience it yourself. But the game's amazing, it's just awesome. Uh, uh, my, my group and I, we loved playing through the storyline, and then, and then we went back and we, we just did everything different, <laughs> just to do it again. And we were really surprised. I mean, we thought it was going to be like I said before, like, oh, we went to A, and then, and then, and then it took us to C. But, and we thought, okay, we're going to take B, and it's going to take us to C. But it didn't just take us to C. It, it, it did something totally different. Which we were really surprised by and we were really satisfied by as well. And uh, I, I like the fact uh, that, 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 you know, the person that's behind the story, behind the, 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 the created this, created the story that you're going to be following, uh, it, you really put their hard work into it and, and, and it really shows. Um, the, the mechanisms of the game, you know, as far as, you know, just traveling about, trying to get different things, trying to go from point A to point B, they support the scenarios that you play perfectly, and everything thematically clicks. It makes sense, and it really feels, because it is a co-op, it really feels like you're working as a team, because a lot of the different things are, it's like you're going to be spread out all over the map, trying to get these things done at the same time, because if you're all clumped together, yeah, you'd be a little bit safer, but you're not going to have enough time to get everything done. And so you have to branch out, you have to go out and solo, take the risks, but in, in order to pull off the win. And the best part about these games, the thematic games for me, is that um, is, is the moments where you are like, you, 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 you're pulling success uh, uh, out of the jaws of defeat, or in some cases, you know, uh, pulling about <laughs> pulling defeat out of the jaws of success. Uh, and, and, and both of those situations just come up with really, really good stories. And as I said before, just because you fail at a certain part of the scenario, it doesn't necessarily that you mean you fail at the game. It just means that you're going to be taking a slightly different path, a slightly different road uh, for the next time that you go. Now, I mean, it, it, it is a weird thing where it has a linear storyline, you know, depending upon, but it also feels kind of sandboxy as well. Um, you know, and it isn't, it isn't a true sandbox, obviously, because, like, you don't just go willy-nilly and just wander around. I mean, the scenario is going to tell you, hey, you need to do this, and you need to accomplish that. But... It does feel enough like, uh, like you know, uh, uh, you know, it's 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 an adventure that you have to go from point A to point B. At, but the way that you get from point A to point B is yours to choose and yours to follow. The game is fantastic. If you're a fan of thematic games, if you're a fan of cooperative games, I think you're going to absolutely love this. If you're a fan of the Mad Max and the post-apocalyptic world or anything like that, it definitely is going to be worth checking out for you. So. There you go. If you have any questions uh, about the old Waste Nights, please just ask Way. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I really do appreciate it. 
And as always, be the most awesome version of you that you possibly can be. Throw more love, happiness, and kindness out into this big giant universe that we live in. And I guarantee you the universe is going to spit more of that right back into your face. Um, as always, you be awesome. This is me, the Ended Viking, saying see you next time.